Hello, I'm Alexa Chung, and I'm here with Harper's Bazaar, and we're about to find out what's in my beauty bag. The best piece of beauty advice I've been given is when I was younger and I was modeling, I was probably 19, a makeup artist told me to always wear sunscreen. So I'd say that has actually stood me in good stead. Uh, I can't say I always follow that because apparently even in the city you're meant to wear it every day, which I don't necessarily. However, I have always been quite careful about wearing a hat, etc. So here we go, the piece de résistance. What is in my beauty bag or beauty bags today because I have two. One I would say usually has my sort of toiletries in it and the other one actual makeup. But here we go. Um, firstly, I don't know if this constitutes a beauty product, but I am obsessed with, as you can see, it's got my real life hair in it. This hairbrush, I got it in Paris at Merci, and it was specifically for people with fine hair, which I have. And whenever I brush my hair, it always gets caught. It's like Whereas this one just goes straight through. So I love this brush. Next up, firstly, it's really important to have a delightful pouch, which is what I travel with. Um, I love, Sam McKnight's Cool Girl Hairspray does what it says on the tin. It makes you look like a cool girl. Um, it's kind of slightly waxy, but in a good way. It just makes it look like you've been dancing at a gig, which obviously we haven't done for a long while. So this is it, a gig in a can. Um, this is delightful. It is B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum by Drunk Elephant and it's just a very nice hydrating serum that I put on before a moisturizer. My favorite skincare products are anything that provides hydration. So I love a serum. I think I've mentioned, but I love Dr. Loretta, has a really lovely serum. I love Augustinus Bader's The Cream. I think a good cleanser is great. I have one called Cleanser 27. I find skincare, no offense, quite boring, but I understand I have to do it. Next up, obviously my stunning Codate Pillar Box Red Lipstick, which I'm wearing right now, which is actually from something that I've made with Codate, which comes as a trio. Speaking of cool bags, it's a little, it doubles as a jewelry box. So nice. So there's three colors in there, but in my everyday kit, I would say a red is essential makes you look less tired, makes it look like you've actually made an effort when it's actually just a very easy thing to apply and brings an outfit together. So if you're dressed like a milkmaid, for example, you can kind of look like a adult milkmaid rather than a child one. To achieve the perfect red lip, firstly, you need to pick the right shade for you. So I developed the Pillar Box Red with Code 8 because it's really a true red much like a letterbox or a telephone box in London. And I do think it's a shade that is universal and suits everyone. It's that real kind of poppy velvet color. But once you've chosen your shade, I think it's about being bold. I don't really use lip liners because I find them a bit fussy. I always lose the sharpener. So I just try and be really careful around the edges. Go on, do the smudgy thing. Then with a cotton bud, just go around the edges and do a bit of concealer around it so it's not kind of turning you into the Joker. <laughs> this is nice. It's Aven Eau Thermale. It's water, basically, thermal spring water. But once I've done my makeup, I kind of spray it over the top so it becomes more dewy and less fresh. I quite like when things look natural and worn in, so that's doing too many, but whatever. We'll keep going. Love this bag. Plus you can use it as a clutch when you're in a pinch, which I do quite often. Oh, this is cool. This I got from Venus Tees. If you're in a hotel or at someone's house, I like to lay that out and then put makeup on it so I feel like I'm really fancy. Makes you feel like you're like pampering yourself. And it doubles as, this is about to be way too much for this whole outfit, but then you can wear it as a little headscarf. One thing I learned about makeup during lockdown is that it was completely non-essential to me <laughs> in that moment. I kind of didn't really wear it in lockdown. I curled my eyelashes and I put a lip balm on. And then some days I'd go all out. If I was cooking dinner, I'd like wear a frock and put on a look. 
But um, really, I guess my relationship to makeup, actually, as much as we all say it's to make ourselves feel better, it's just to make other people feel more comfortable looking at my head, I think. Code 8 Radiate Beauty Balm, which is like a light coverage, kind of like a foundation, but it just makes your skin look even and dewy and refreshed. It takes approximately eight years off of your head region. So I really like that. But if I'm having a lazy day, and actually this extends to if I'm having a really busy day, I try and minimize the beauty routine. So I'll wash my face with a cleanser. I'm using Augustus Bader at the moment. Then I'll add a serum. I really like Dr. Loretta. Then a moisturizer. Then Codate's Beauty Balm, Radiate Beauty Balm. And I have a brush that I just kind of twirl it in. I quite like cream blushes as well, so I might add one of those, curl my eyelashes, and then lip balm. That's it. This is really nice. This is the Chanel Transparent Balm Essential. So you can just put it on your cheekbones and it makes it dewy and balmy. I think I read an article recently where people are after dolphin skin, <laughs> which really made me laugh. But this is great for lovers of dolphin skin. Eyelash curler. Kevin O'Quan very important. So sometimes I won't wear mascara, I'll just do a little bit of concealer, a blush, a lip balm, and definitely please curl the eyelashes. Another look I really like, which I kind of wore so much that I actually feel weird when I put it on now, but anyway, it was a cat eye. A look that really suits a lot of people. Even if you just do a fine version of it, it's really nice to bring the eyes kind of up and out. I kind of anchor my elbow to something, so it's kind of better to do it if you're leaning on something, maybe a table and you've got a mirror. And then from there, I draw the outside line first. Say your eyes were completely straight, which no one's is, but let's just say they are. Then I would take a 45 degree and try and draw on that 45 degree, check that they're balanced, and then just fill it in to along halfway down the lid because I've tried it all the way along, and on me it just turns into uh, purple rain, tracks of my tears, a bit of like smudging going under the eye. So just from halfway along and then you just bring it up. That's it, that's the cat eye. Ico brow gel to shape and define. Love brows. Also really enjoy the mesmerizing action of actually brushing your eyebrows up. I find it really soothing and I wonder if it's related to that tapping technique where you're meant to like tap your brow. I don't really know how to tap, but someone else does. And maybe that's why I quite like doing that. Oh, this is good, Lano Lips. It's really coconutty, super hydrating. It feels like gooey in a non-sticky way, but it gives you a little balm. So sometimes I'll do lipstick and then just put a bit of this in it to make it uh, just feel more comfortable really, and a bit more natural, it kind of. So if, for example, you wanted to wear an Alexa Chung Cody Affogato shade, you could put some of this on after and it would look dead nice. So I grew up in the 90s and I used to wear Coffee Shimmer lipstick to school with baby blue eyeshadow. I thought that I was looking like Drew Barrymore, you know, when she had that really cute pixie crawl and hang out with Courtney Love and they'd just be incredible in vintage gowns on the red carpet. But in actual fact, I just looked really weird. And then I'd like go horse riding afterwards and I'd have baby blue eyeshadow, coffee shimmer lips and like a riding hat. I don't know what was going on. Plus, I dyed my hair to look like Jerry Halliwell, but it hadn't quite worked out. So I just had like blonde strip, it was bad. It was really bad, guys. One thing that makes me feel made up instantly is glitter. When I first met my boyfriend, he's always like, are you wearing glittery eyeshadow? And I'm like, yeah, I am. Because sometimes like a bare face with a glitter eye is quite funny. But I think it's kind of fab to wear like a maybe men's tailoring with a glitter eyeshadow and that's it. Quite funny. I do have a signature scent, thanks for asking. It is, uh, corn flour and pancakes mixed with fried eggs and bacon. <laughs> no, my signature scent is um, Frederick Mal has one called Rose et Cuir, which is rose and leather. I really do like rose smelling things, especially like a natural oil. And leather 
don't worry, it's not going anywhere weird. Leather. When I was younger, I my mum would go into Waitrose or another unnamed supermarket chain and uh, would drop me off in the saddlery, um, which was like a horse riding tack shop, and I'd just stand in the middle of the leather and just smell it. <laughs> You know, there wasn't much to do in Hampshire, I can't tell you. That was a real highlight of the week. When I was younger, I really loved a, a kind of conventional beauty. I always felt like I was a bit exotic looking or I just wanted to be like basically a West London white girl with long blonde hair. And I think something that's been incredible the way that modern life has progressed and people have become more inclusive and representation has expanded in the way that beauty campaigns are shown to us means that I've got an appreciation for uh, difference basically and now I'm like okay a beauty ideal isn't that like grinning one dimensional version of beauty that we used to be faced with and now it's like you know I want to look like so many other women <laughs> it's expanded that's a lot of tat thank you <laughs> so much for watching what's in my bag with Harper's Bazaar. Um, the answer is a whole cornucopia of stuff. <laughs>